The following is a live copyrighted presentation. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time now for Radiolawtalk.com with your host, Frederick Penny, attorney at law. And now, Radiolawtalk.com. Welcome to the most exciting, entertaining, and by far most informative radio show on the earth other than the alien shows, which are much better late at night driving through Nevada in a broken down car during a storm. Other than that, Radio Law Talk is the greatest show on earth. If you want to listen to things and, and be informed about stuff, just listen in uh, to Radio Law Talk. Denise Dirks, myself, Fred Penny, Todd Cunin, and our producer, three-time Emmy Award nominee, but never a winner. Uh, we have Cal Hunter behind the glass. Let's make sure you remember to call us if you want at 855-LAW-RADIO or tweet us at Radio Law Talk. We're going to talk about a lot of fun things today, including our case or no case, in which we're going to try to see whether or not Cal can, can uh, trip us up, and uh, we're going to determine whether or not he is telling us a true case or a fake case, and if it's true, what the outcome is. We're also going to get in detail about, uh, kind of continue to talk about what we like to talk about is Hollywood and a lot of the fun stuff going on. We're going to talk about Duck Dynasty lawsuit, Pitch Perfect lawsuit, a little bit about Jesse Smollett. Without Jesse Smollett and without Harvey Weinstein – and without Johnny Depp, I think we'd have to shut this, this show down. we just <laughs> shut it right down. At, at least the Hollywood portion That's of it. That's exactly so. <laughs> right. We're going to talk about Def Jam, uh, Russell Simmons, legal woes. And then we're going to get into the NCAA basketball scandal again and maybe Lori Laughlin, the latest on that issue. Uh, but other than that, we're going to have a good time. I'm just guessing that, you know, artists who record on Def Jam records, uh, they on your playlist there, Fred? Is that you know you go it's, you go driving down uh-huh. with the but with the uh-huh. bass booming and yo what up? <laughs> it was that and bread. Those, bread okay, yeah. good. So good, bread good. and Def Jam. That's, okay, all right. right. Anything uh-huh. that's on a Def Jam record, bread and uh, you know maybe a little bit of America. Th- those those bands. You, you, your your musical tastes span the generations. You know the new you know the new young people are going. Bread, I like bread. Bread, bread what's bread's that? good. Yeah, toast, yeah. toast it with some butter. No, no, the new people are going, bread, that's gluten. Gluten will kill you. That's you don't want to eat gluten. Gluten's the devil's food. <laughs> Welcome, KP, KPKK, 101.1 FM, uh, Amargosa Valley. Not, We're not, like, welcoming them, but thank you for joining us. We love the Amargosa Valley. I like the mm-hmm. Amargosa mm-hmm. Valley. That's right near uh, – that, that, the reason we always play them is they're one of our first first affiliates to come on board. But the newest one as of last week was WSLA, 1560 AM in New Orleans, and KACT, 1360 AM in Andrews, Odessa, Midland, Texas. Welcome to the Radio Law Talk family. We have a lot of fun here. But uh, before we get going, we do this thing called Case or No Case, and you have to roll into this in a second, Cal. But remember, Radio Law Talk airs live every Saturday, 9 to noon Pacific time. We stream live, and we post out shows on radiolawtalk.com. That's it. That's what we do. Cal, roll it. Now it's time to play Case or No Case. Yay! All right. Now, uh, since you guys like the showbiz stuff, I'm going to take you to the city so nice they had to name it twice. New York, New York. A famous actress, a fixture on the nightclub scene, had a reputation as being a party girl, shall we say. Mm, kind of like, hmm, hmm. maybe the one hmm. sitting to my right. One <laughs> Back about uh, no. in her teens. Denise Dirks was never. Did we, did we mention to our new listeners, we have a lot of new listeners about the rooftop. Nope. Haven't told the story. Not going to do it now because okay. we're in the middle of the case. <laughs> All right. Let's go on. She's shaking uh, her head. One night, the actress left a club at which she had been partying and grabbed a mink coat. Mm. Mink coat. Actual mink. Blondish fur. Lovely. Trouble is, the coat belonged to a Russian model and a Columbia College student, a certain Masha Markova, age 22, who believes she had forever lost her prized jacket a gift from her grandmother in Minsk. Minsk. That's right. She got a mink from her grandma in Minsk. Say that anyway, three times the point, fast. <laughs> the point is that Marakova contacted the club and said that the club said, oh, yeah, we'll get to the bottom of it. And uh, 
She never heard back from them. So then Marikova called a lawyer who called the actress's lawyer and threatened to sue if the coat wasn't returned. Miraculously, several hours later, people from the club called Markova saying, we're going to bring you something. They were very discreet. It didn't even mention any names of the alleged offending actress and not even the word coat. Two days later, though, the coat arrived and it reeked, Markova said, of the actresses in air quotes, stank. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Cigarettes, booze, and who knows what all. And now Masha Markova wants the actress to pay $10,000 for the unauthorized rental of her mink coat. And so I ask you, ladies and gentlemen, case or no case. Fred, you have a clarifying uh, I, question. Yeah, clarifying. I, I thought for sure what you were going to say is they were going to bring something to yeah, yo, we got this girl here. We're dragging her by her hair. Here she is, man. You, you, I thought that's what you were going to bring. No, not like that. They no. just brought just the fur. Just the fur. They were going to bring the, the, the actress, but she didn't want her stank in her apartment. And so, Mr. Kunin, I believe it's your turn to go first here on case. Yeah, the, the perfect case, no case for you to go first on stank. Todd. Stank. <laughs> stank. You know, I'm going to tell you, former she, Soviet Russia, hey, we do not wear too. mink coats. Mink coats wear you. That's the way it is, and we like it. So uh, she's got her mink coat here. I don't know what's going to go on with it, but it's got the skank stank on it, and I do not want it. That's kind of uh, where she's headed here with this. Yeah. Uh, yep. You know, that's, uh, oh my gosh. So skank stank, huh? th There you go. That's where you, the, the case, the case or no case, the case is a skank stank. Mink Write coat. that down. Um, <laughs> I'm going to say because this is so far out of the norm that this uh, this is an actual event. Which she got from Minsk, by the way. Yes. The mink from Minsk. Yes, she <laughs> got it from Minsk. That's what happens <laughs> here, you know. Uh, Todd and his accent. Do not, you got the best accent. Do, 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 not, do not try to mess with us. We, we, we skank you up here, you, you, you stank person. So um, so what I'm going to say is that uh, I think this is based on a true story, but I don't think this ever got to lawsuit status. I don't believe that a lawsuit was actually ever filed. I think there were a lot of threats, stuff going back and forth, but I don't think that it was ever filed. So uh, based on a true story, but no case. All right. No actual case filed. Very well. Denise Dirks, what say you? Model Marsha Makova, Minks Mink Coat. Mm -hmm. I'm thinking that it sounds a little bit too contrived. Um, yeah, I, I just think it's too contrived. I don't think it's a case. Okay. And I think this is the type of factual pattern that you'd be looking for that you could make into some kind of a funny poem or make something funny out of it. Um, and if anything, the club paid to have the mink coat cleaned. I mean, obviously, they had the mink coat. They, the, In fact, what is it called? It's a bellment, right? Isn't it a bellment when you put your coat in with the uh, coat girl at a, at a club? Or guy. Or a guy, exactly, and Coat then check, yeah. right, and then the the club actually owes a duty to take care of that coat and to make sure it goes back to the proper owner. I'm going to say no case. All right, fair enough. We have le a one minute left. I'm going to put mine in in one minute left. One minute left. Mine's easy. I just I'm going to play the odds because I want to try to get points. I'm saying it's a case, and she wins. Thank you for your analysis on the bailment. She's correct. <laughs> she wins. They had to clean it and take care of it. I'm completely opposite of these two, only because I want to try to win some points over them. Hey, stay with us. Tweet us at Radio Law Talk or call us at 855-529-7234. Remember, case or no case, whether or not uh, the, uh, what was it, a fur? Was it a real fur? Was it a was mink? a mink, a minks mink. The mink case or no case. We'll be back. <laughs> and what actress would be seen wearing a mink coat in New York these days? Isn't that a question in and of itself? My case and no case answer is coming up. Don't go away. All advertising for legal services on Radio Law Talk is strictly for the state or states in which the advertiser is licensed. For more information, go to radiolawtalk.com. 
Warning, don't let your business get left behind in what is likely to be the biggest economic boom in recent history. If you need to build for your business to grow, call General Steel today for a pre-engineered steel building designed for your needs. No wasted space. Steel prices are expected to rise, but you can still lock in your price on a General Steel building. And you can still save as much as half the cost and time of conventional construction. As much as half. But you must call now. If you need a church building, office, warehouse, manufacturing space, retail space, or more. Call General Steel today. You can still get the General's 50-year structural warranty and General Steel quality, all at a price you can afford. So don't let rising steel prices put your project out of reach and stop you from making your company great. 800-617-9312. 800-617-9312. 800-617-9312. That's 800-617-9312. This is Denise Dirks. We can represent clients in divorce, legal separation, child and spousal support, custody, termination of parental rights, step-parent adoptions, guardianships, and even conservatorship matters. Call 1-877-886-7186 for a consultation. The law offices of Denise L. Dirks provide family law services in Northern California. When the law affects your family, call 877-886-7186. The family of attorneys at Denise L. Dirks is here to help. Jason Ross back here with Fred Penny, managing attorney from Penny & Associates Injury Lawyers. Now, Fred, what type of cases are you dealing with now, and what sets you apart? Jason, we help people with all types of personal injury cases. We're former insurance company trial lawyers. We understand the other side, which gives us a distinct advantage over our competition. Remember, we don't get paid unless we win. That's Penny & Associates Injury Lawyers with locations throughout California. For a free consultation, go to pennylawyers.com or give them a call 1-800-616-4LAW. That's P-E-N-N-E-Y lawyers.com. The cost of getting rid of garbage is high, and recycling products is lucrative. If you're a business or know of a business that needs an individual compactor or baler, call Northwest Compacting at 888-201-0911. If you already have an industrial compactor, baler, or shredder and need service, don't forget to call Northwest Compacting at 888-201-0911. Northwest Compacting, your full-service industrial compacting and baling company. Read more about them at northwestcompacting.com. Many women have so many clothes in the closet, but then we go to get dressed and find we have nothing to wear. So ah! We've all been there. We all want to be comfortable and fashionable at the same time. And it's difficult to find clothing that makes that task effortless. But at Letty & Company, you can find trendy, comfortable clothing that is affordable. Things you'll want to wear every day. Shop with a purpose online with free shipping. Just go to lettyandcompany.com. lettyandcompany.com. If you're one of those independent people who wants your own business and you love food service, we just might have a great opportunity for you. Iceberg Drive-Ins. Iceberg is famous for its thick shakes and delicious food. We lend you our supply chain and expertise, and you can potentially have a thriving, successful, fun business that your customers will love. Iceberg Drive-Ins has some prime areas available right now, so if you're interested, get in touch with us right away. Go to icebergdrivein.com and click on the Contact Us button. Iceberg Drive-In. Ready to grow with you. I am Cameron Levitt, Chief Operating Officer of Concussion Medical Clinic. California's first concussion medical clinic is now open. As concussions increase each year, there has never been a greater need for concussion specialists. Our physicians at Concussion Medical Clinic are board certified in pediatric neurology and sports medicine and have partnered with universities, hospitals, and rehab clinics to expedite the recovery process. Simply put, we are elevating the standard of care. When you need an expert concussion opinion or concussion care, visit concussionmedicalclinic.com to schedule your appointment. You're listening to RadioLawTalk.com. And now back to your host, Frederick Penny. Yeah, interesting. New York, New York. Is he tricking us, Cal? Generally, I think he probably is, but I had to go against the odds. Tell us again the, the mink story. Okay. Briefly. Once again, a mink from Minsk was given to a Soviet model who claims that an actress stole it from her at a club. She finally got the coat back two days later after threatening legal action, but she said the coat had the actress's, in quotes, stank on it, meaning cigarettes and alcohol that the Russian actress did not like. And so she went to a lawyer and said, I want to charge this actress, Lindsay Lohan, 
$10,000 for the unauthorized rental. And uh, there you have a bit of a, of a hint. Those of you who say this was not a case, that would be Denise. Uh, Wait, Denise. Uh, and Todd. I, I said it was based on a true story, but no lawsuit was oh, filed. so Todd and Denise. Yes. You're wrong. Fred Penny. Oh, you beat the stats here. The, I beat the stats. <laughs> the actress was Lindsay Lohan yes. after the kerfuffle. A, a rival of the trendy Ten Oak Club, where the whole yes. thing went down, offered to pay the legal settlement on Lilo's behalf and buy the actress a brand new $11,000 quote. Uh, now, coat. see, I had the right reasoning. You did. Oh, you right there. go yeah. away, ah, you guys. And the wrong answer. Go uh, away. Uh, obviously, the rival club figured it would benefit from seeing Ms. Lohan show up and party in their joint, so they decided to, to pay the legal settlement. Next hour, by the way, our next in the next, next time that we have an hour of Radio Law Talk, I'm going to take you to France. To France. Okay. All right. Speaking so that, of frogs. That, ladies and gentlemen, is. Thank you. No case. Jesse Smollett. Jesse Smollett. We're not going to talk a lot about it. We talk about it a lot. Guess what? I, I guess the question is Todd, you're into all these ra- these TV shows. I'm not a TV show you know, guru. The, the show he's in is called what? Empire. Okay, Empire. Well, the show she wa- he was, was in. He was in. But what's that, what is it about? So Empire is a show about a record producer. It's interesting. We're going to be talking about Russell Simmons coming up, yes. who is a record producer. And I always Def got Jam. Def Jam Records. And I always got the feeling that uh, this Empire was loosely based on that story. It's about um, a, a record label that gets made up into an empire african-american owners with the hip-hop crowd i thought it was a motown oh i'm so wrong so it could well it's uh it depends i mean it's set in modern times so so that's what empire is about and lee daniels is one of the co uh co you know producers and apparently really close friend of jesse's and i guess the big speculation is and we've the reason we're bringing this up is we follow this Lawsuit. There's actually a lawsuit filed against him by the city um, of what Jesse uh, Smollett did. We're not going to get into the details of that right now. But apparently he's officially came out and said, no, he will not be returning. That is Jesse for the final uh, uh, year or series of Empire, right? Yeah. And what's funny about this is there was a video saying he was going to return to season six. And it was like this big promotion. And then um, then. Uh, Daniels, I believe, shut it down. Said that's it. You know, here's, Not some, here's something interesting, and this is this is why we bring this up. Is you know, this is about lawsuits. We and we've discussed this, but you know, and I don't know Lee Daniels, but apparently he was really close to Jesse, and also saw him as like a pseudo son. And I'm going to do a shout out to Lee Daniels here because we usually don't do that. This I'm going to quote him of what he said about what happened. Clearly, Jesse did something ill well let's back up it's alleged that jesse did something that there's a lot of facts that go against him that was improper and was clearly anti-trump and political yet also tried to build himself up given all those issues with him and right now he's a kind of don't touch him type of person he comes out lee daniels and says quote what i'm learning right now is i can't judge that that judgment is for the man wearing the black coat, or it could be a woman, and uh, with a gavel and God. I can only support him, Jesse, because he's like my son. He is my son, so I am with him. I can only support him and give him compassion. Good for you, buddy. Good for you, buddy. If they make some mistake, Lee Daniels, there you, there you go. That, that's the way to look at things. You know, and, and one thing here, so... Clear, this is the final season of Empire. They know it's ending after season six, so there's not going to be a season seven. Uh, Smollett is not coming back, but they did renew his contract for the season. So even though he's not coming back, he is getting paid for season six pursuant to his contract. And I think that this is just a, uh, you know, we want to go out with the bang. There's too much writing on it. There, there's a reason it's ending. Maybe viewership was up. Maybe it was down. And I think it's just so controversial that if you bring the character back, given the allegations that are around there, you run the risk of losing out on stuff. And I think the last thing that Empire wants to do, 
let's not lose sight of the fact that Fox is making money on a per episode basis, right? Right. So they're making money per episode, and if they're not making money, and let's say this thing is signed on for 12 episodes in the final season, and they're hemorrhaging money because nobody's tuning in after two or three episodes, they'll cut the cord on it. They'll bring in something else that's going to that's going to generate ad revenue and do something. I think Daniels wants to make sure that doesn't happen. Let us finish this out. And the fear might be it's all speculation that if we brought Smollett back, we might run the risk of having it cut before we finish yeah, the episode. Yeah, or boycotted. Yeah. You know, the, the viewers might boycott it. Which, which is not to say that later on it wouldn't come out on Netflix, the final episodes that didn't air, and you'd be able to see all of it. But, you know, you lose revenue when that happens. Right. Def Jam mm-hmm. co-founder Russell Simmons uh, is now being um, in civil court. This is not a criminal thing. Um, being there's allegations from some women claiming that that uh, they had uh, some relations with him that were not consensual. Uh, um, and and trial was, is coming up in yes, August, August yes. 15th and of this year. It's coming up here in California. Yeah, and we're going to talk about this. How he actually lives in Indonesia, supposedly now. There's a lot of interesting legal issues about summary judgments and statute limitations because this they're claiming happened years ago. I mean, like long, long time ago, uh, back in I believe was it the 90s or 2000s. But anyway, a long time ago this occurred, and they're they're uh, fighting over whether or not they can kick this lawsuit out. We'll be back. This is Radio Law Talk. I'm your host Frederick Penny with Todd Cunin and Denise Dirks. This is Radio Law Talk on RadioLawTalk.com and on your favorite radio station. There's more coming up. Don't go away. All advertising for legal services on Radio Law Talk is strictly for the state or states in which the advertiser is licensed. For more information, go to RadioLawTalk.com. Hi, my name is Lily. My mom and dad used to fight about money all the time. Then one day, I heard them talking about this guy. Some uncle I never knew called Uncle Sam. Well, they say this Uncle Sam guy wanted them to pay him like a gazillion dollars. And they didn't have a gazillion dollars. So they called this company they heard on the radio called The Tax Doctor. And The Tax Doctor worked with Uncle Sam's people. I think they're called the IRS. And they are able to work it out so my mom and dad didn't have to pay Uncle Sam very much money at all. So now mom and dad are happy. And I'm happy too. Thanks, Tax Doctor. If you owe $10,000 or more to the IRS or state, call now and pay less. 800-263-2610. 800-263-2610. That's 800-263-2610. Know someone with a drinking or drug problem? Learn how to get sober after we share these stories. I was 35 with two beautiful children when my life and addiction started to spiral out of control. After my divorce, I went into a depression cycle and started drinking more often and using prescription drugs. After my second DWI and arrest, my ex-husband threatened to take our children away from me. I was 17 when I became addicted to heroin and meth. I thought I could quit on my own, but I couldn't. It hit me when I was arrested. Get sober now. Your private insurance may cover costs and we'll get you here. It's simple. Just call Elite Rehab Placement right now. Please don't wait. Your life matters to us. 800-918-1376. 800-918-1376. That's 800-918-1376. Jason Ross back here with Fred Penny, managing attorney from Penny & Associates Injury Lawyers. Now, Fred, what type of cases are you dealing with now, and what sets you apart? Jason, we help people with all types of personal injury cases. We're former insurance company trial lawyers. We understand the other side, which gives us a distinct advantage over our competition. Remember, we don't get paid unless we win. That's Penny & Associates Injury Lawyers with locations throughout California. For a free consultation, go to pennylawyers.com or give them a call 1-800-616-4LAW. That's P-E-N-N-E-Y lawyers.com. 
This is Denise Dirks. We can represent clients in divorce, legal separation, child and spousal support, custody, termination of parental rights, step-parent adoptions, guardianships, and even conservatorship matters. Call 1-877-886-7186 for a consultation. The law offices of Denise L. Dirks provide family law services in Northern California. When the law affects your family, call 877-886-7186. The family of attorneys at Denise L. Dirks is here to help. I'm going to quick quack car wash, get my car washed, make it quick quack, pretty shiny, sexy, just because I want to don't drive dirty, going to get my car suds in the quick quack car wash. It's the quick quack, quickest and the cleanest by far, we're talking three skinny minutes sitting right in your car, wash a hundred feet of cloth, washing your car at the quick quack car wash. Any Honda, Mazda, Ford, or Chevy, Sauber, Cadillac, quick quack, the proof are up, just like that. You'll be happy, looking snappy, you'll be glad you was asked a quick quack. Car wash, get on the web and go to don'tdrivedirty.com and see where you got your closest quick quack in the local area. Get in your car, get in your truck. Get on the road, come visit the dock. Quick Quack Car Wash, where your car will always leave happy, guaranteed. They take pride in being clean and green by conserving and recycling the water they use only at the Quick Quack Car Wash. I knew I had a problem, but I didn't know what to do about it. I tried counting calories, I took pills, eating and eating, and then more eating. I really wanted to stop, but nothing could make me stop. At one point, it was so bad that I just felt like giving up. I felt so alone. Like nobody else could possibly understand. We understand. We're Overeaters Anonymous, and we have helped thousands of people just like you. People who want to stop their compulsive eating and start living a healthy, rewarding life. Overeaters Anonymous, help me get my life back. Now I eat in a way that's healthy and good for me. I never realized what I was missing out on. With OA, I am living again and loving it. Start living the life you deserve with help from Overeaters Anonymous. Find us on the web at OA.org. That is Armadillo. This is Radio Law Talk. And now, back to the show. So we're talking about uh, one of the founders of Def Jam, uh, Russell Simmons, and, and this is a very complicated legal issues and wrangling in this case that to the three of us is very interesting, and we've talked about what – we're not going to bore you because to us it's exciting and interesting, the little tweaks they're doing, the two lawyers, but it, it's just – you're like, oh. But what it comes down to is as follows. He, he's denying this, and this happened – they're claiming in 1988, this lady – and, um, you know, uh, what's interesting about this is there's apparently some other ladies that are claiming, you know, some sort of uh, sexual uh, misconduct. Um, which Against is, Russell Simmons. Right, which is a, it's a civil case that they're bringing. But there's a statute of limitations. You have two years to bring it. And this happened, she's claiming, in 1988. And the argument for you that you would take, you know, on his side is um, not only that, but, but – um, she didn't know the exact dates. There's no exact dates written down or the time that this happened. Apparently it happened, what, in a hotel right. or what? So Russell Simmons got the judge to hear this matter on August 15th. It's coming up on a motion for summary judgment. That is a motion that can be dispositive of the entire case. He's re- raising statute of limitation issues, and he's raising um, – claiming that he has never had non-consensual sex at any point in his life, which is a material fact in this case. And so when you do a motion for summary judgment, it says all the facts are uh, undisputed, and as a matter of law, the judge has to find in favor of Russell Simmons. And the women now have countered that argument on the statute of limitations in a very interesting way. What they do is there is a, under California law, because this was brought in California, there is a a tolling of the two-year statute if the individual leaves the state. And then it's told until that person during that time period, which we don't know the exact time, unless you know, Todd, when he left the state. I I don't know know when he left the state. Just 
for anybody that might not necessarily know what tolling means. It means that so if, if it's two years and, they, and if it happened in 88, it's got to be filed by 90. But what this statute says is if he leaves the state in that period, they stop counting the time until he comes back. And so you have additional time. And what they're saying is he never came back and now he's in Indonesia. So we filed we filed within the statute. Denise. Right. Well, he left the country. Um, there's an article about when he left and is he trying to flee to you know get out of all this troubles um, and it happened the week before July 27th 2018 when oh, he well, left that, the that... country to go to Indonesia but but he was also but he might have been but, out of the state but he was also out of the state because he lives in Queens he's from New York but we don't know when he left the state of California so and, that's and, the issue. And, and he might have only been I believe he was only in the state for a concert his place of residence was New York no, he, he, he had a West Hollywood mansion. He put the mansion on the market at, around the same time. So he it looks around the like same time of what when he left to Indonesia. Okay, well, I'm talking about 1988 when this happened. Oh, that's true. So no, no. when this happened, the yeah. allegation is that he had he they he asked her and her son to come backstage to him. So this happened in connection with a concert. That's what the, he's saying that he doesn't even he didn't even know who they are. He doesn't even remember doing that. But if her allegation is it right. happened at a concert. Right. Then she is affixing the timeline of happening in a concert. If it happened in 88 in a concert, in 88 he was living in New York. So that's why she gets to toll and not have to file by 1990. But my argument would be, but wait a minute. You don't even know. She can't even put a specific date this yeah. occurred. And my argument is you got to tell us the date this happened. Absolutely. How, how, you know, what if I got an alibi? Yeah. Well, that's what he's claiming he does. Yes. He's going to claiming he wasn't there. Uh, at the time she's trying to claim into the, during that general time period, he wasn't around. He says this is ridiculous. They're trying to get money. He even – the allegations from him is he's even found some documents, or his lawyers have, where she's filed bankruptcy. And believe it or not, this is allegations that allegedly pled guilty for prostitution. That's what they're arguing in their papers. So – you know, there, there's there's some they're fighting going back and forth here. But anyway, this is this is coming up, and this is interesting that this is this guy's got some money because he's Def, oh yeah. Jeff Jam is a huge record label, right? Isn't it a record label that? Yeah, it's it's huge. That the the guy's not hurting for cash, and I mean, look, I there are legitimate claims out there, and I and I don't mean to undermine the legitimate claims for sexual assault and people seeking redress. I will say though that if a person is worth a substantial amount of money, there is a lawsuit target that goes on their back. Right. There's an increase in lawsuits, and he is no different. He, he's, he's had stuff filed against him. So we've got USC basketball coach. Now, we've been talking a lot about the admission scandal for quite some time. If you go back to uh, our Radio Law Talk website, you can go back and find where we talked about this big scandal going on in basketball with college, with supposed big shoe companies coming in and paying money to coaches to push them toward their, you know, their brand, whatever brand it is. And the first, to our knowledge, the first actual plead um, and settlement with the government is this USC basketball coach is going to avoid prison time because he pleads. And uh, this individual's uh, uh, name is Tony Bland. Apparently, Tony Bland has got a really, uh, and again, uh, I, you know, I always lean a little bit toward, you know, hey, you know, he, his situation may be a little bit different. He came from a rough house, rough, you know, he, he grew up in the kind of the hood, ate out of garbage cans at time. He, you know, they they mention and he made it made it good. He went to uh, San Diego State, played basketball. He played basketball somewhere else and transferred to San Diego State, and then he got caught up in this scandal and took a four thousand dollar bribe. Which is the which he admitted to forty one hundred dollars um, to help out these uh, these uh, these kids who are coming to college and, and to steer them to a specific manager. So that's, that's exactly what he right. was doing. He got a bribe of forty one hundred dollars to steer these kids to this certain manager. Yeah. What's interesting about this is what the judge said. So he he pled, and we're going to tell you what he got. He got no prison time. But what the judge says, this has nothing to do with the argument that is going on and the controversy of whether or not these kids playing NCAA basketball should be paid to play basketball. Right. And we went into this before uh, in our other uh, segments way back when we talked about this. These kids are making tens of millions of dollars for these schools. 
I mean, what did we bring up? We brought was it Ohio State, 151 million? I, You're I talking know, about the sports program. Sports programs. Yes. They're making so Absolutely. much money. These sports programs on these kids that are basically getting 1,500 bucks a month to live on. And I've seen this firsthand, by the way, in major Division One colleges where these kids are are freaking poor. I mean, they're barely making the. Oh, they get their education, ladies and gentlemen. They're making tens of millions of dollars for these uh, for these schools. And yes, they get an education. Believe it or not, it's more expensive to live than you think than just getting your education. So Tony Bland was sentenced by the judge to 100 hours of community service and two years probation. And that seems appropriate since he pled to it. He didn't make there be a long, drawn-out trial. And I think judges do take that in consideration. Well, the other thing that I saw with this, and, and I think kudos to Bland and to his attorney, was there was a range. There was a possibility he could have gone to jail. He could have spent time behind bars. But I see this, and this happens sometimes with criminal defendants. Okay, They plead, and then sentencing is going to come about a month later. They A report from the probation officer is generated. The judge reads the report. They hear any arguments at sentencing that either the defense or the prosecution want to make, and the judge hands out sentencing. If that defendant goes to the probation officer for his interview, his or her interview in any criminal case, and says, you know, when, when the probation officer says, all right, give me your statement on the case. If you go to the probation officer as a defendant and say, I still think the facts were bogus here. I mean, look, I took a plea. I'll do it. But the officer was this, and I really didn't do anything wrong. And you've got every justification in the world that's going to go in the report. And guess what? You're going to go to jail. If you as a defendant go and, and legitimately feel this, but go and say, I did wrong, it was wrong of me to do it, I feel bad that I did it, everything that Bland apparently did and said, then it shows that you've got the remorse, that you feel remorse for it, and it's something judges consider, and they're more likely to give you a more lenient sentence. Well, not only that, what his, his attorney, don't forget the attorney could argue to the judge why he should have a lenient sentence, a le a, a, we be more lenient on his sentence. They said this guy's since this has happened, it's, his life has been just radioactive. He can't find work. Don't forget that. And not only that, he he received the smallest bribe of all those arrested because they're still waiting for a number of others. You got Emmanuel Book Richardson, assistant in Arizona. You got Chuck uh, a Person, uh, ex assistant at Auburn. You've got one that's at Oklahoma State in South Carolina. We got more people coming up, but he took the smallest bribe of all. So guess what? You know he's not he's going to get off a little bit easier. And you know what? Our our uh, our systems are our our uh, jails are pretty dang crowded. So we're going to be back. Uh, I hate to say it, but we're going to talk about Lori Laughlin again. I know some of you might be tired about tired of hearing about it, but we're going to talk about the latest. Uh, they again are fighting this admission scandal. We'll be right back. You are listening to Radio Law Talk on your favorite radio station and on radiolawtalk.com. Remember, you can listen to all previous shows. They're all right there in podcast form. And you can hear the show live every Saturday, 9 to noon Pacific. All advertising for legal services on Radio Law Talk is strictly for the state or states in which the advertiser is licensed. For more information, go to radiolawtalk.com. Warning, don't let your business get left behind in what is likely to be the biggest economic boom in recent history. If you need to build for your business to grow, call General Steel today for a pre-engineered steel building designed for your needs. No wasted space. Steel prices are expected to rise, but you can still lock in your price on a General Steel building. And you can still save as much as half the cost and time of conventional construction. As much as half. But you must call now. If you need a church building, office, warehouse, manufacturing space, retail space, or more. Call General Steel today. You can still get the General's 50-year structural warranty and General Steel quality, all at a price you can afford. So don't let rising steel prices put your project out of reach and stop you from making your company great. 800-617-9312. 800-617-9312. That's 800-617-9312. If you're one of those independent people who wants your own business and you love food service, we just might have a great opportunity for you. Iceberg Drive-Ins. 
Iceberg is famous for its thick shakes and delicious food. We lend you our supply chain and expertise, and you can potentially have a thriving, successful, fun business that your customers will love. Iceberg Drive-Ins has some prime areas available right now, so if you're interested, get in touch with us right away. Go to icebergdrivein.com and click on the Contact Us button. Iceberg Drive-In, ready to grow with you. Jason Ross back here with Fred Penny, managing attorney from Penny and Associates Injury Lawyers. Now, Fred, what type of cases are you dealing with now, and what sets you apart? Jason, we help people with all types of personal injury cases. We're former insurance company trial lawyers. We understand the other side, which gives us a distinct advantage over our competition. Remember, we don't get paid unless we win. That's Penny and Associates Injury Lawyers with locations throughout California. For a free consultation, go to pennylawyers.com or give them a call 1-800-616-4LAW. That's P-E-N-N-E-Y lawyers.com. This is Denise Dirks. We can represent clients in divorce, legal separation, child and spousal support, custody, termination of parental rights, step-parent adoptions, guardianships, and even conservatorship matters. Call 1-877-886-7186 for a consultation. The law offices of Denise L. Dirks provide family law services in Northern California. When the law affects your family, call 877-886-7186. The family of attorneys at Denise L. Dirks is here to help. Many women have so many clothes in the closet, but then we go to get dressed and find we have nothing to wear. Ah! We've all been there. We all want to be comfortable and fashionable at the same time, and it's difficult to find clothing that makes that task effortless. But at Letty & Company, you can find trendy, comfortable clothing that is affordable, things you'll want to wear every day. Shop with a purpose, online, with free shipping. Just go to lettyandcompany.com. LettyandCompany.com. Even in the hustle and noise of this modern world, we feel the pull of the forest to walk under the canopy and feel transformed. National forests are essential to life, majestic and grand. They clean our air, supply drinking water to millions, and provide homes to countless wildlife. They fuel our imaginations, inspiring us to think big, And now's the time to do just that. Fires and natural disasters devastate our forests each year. That's why we're replanting millions of new trees across the country. The Arbor Day Foundation needs your help. We've heard the call of the wild and we've answered. Scientists, foresters, volunteers, and members, together we can preserve and protect our heritage and legacy. We must act now so that the generations of today and tomorrow can continue to depend on our forests. Visit arborday.org. See how you can help. Oh, come on. This is Radio Law Talk. And now, back to the show. Remember, seek legal counsel. We are talking only about general topics of law. If you are tired tonight and you want to, you're not having problems, go to sleep. Uh, just go to our website and read the disclaimers, and that will put you to sleep really well. But read them in detail. Detail. The, the details of those disclaimers are just exciting. I Very mean, exciting. Yeah, it's just it's going to put you to sleep. So just details remember details in that. the disclaimers. Disclaimers. Putting you to sleep. <laughs> Making you some Come back, disease. guys. Come back. Come back. Oh, oh sorry. Back. Oh, we're back? Okay, <laughs> oh. All right, all right. <laughs> Lori Laughlin. Lori Laughlin. Lori Laughlin. Who, 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 tell us what's going on. Lori Laughlin, everybody knows, is the is part of that admission scandal. She she's has an the, actress. She's an actress. She has the two daughters that were supposedly, was it the two daughters, are supposedly on the rowing team um, at USC. Uh, she's accused, again, these are all acquisite, accusations, accused of, being, of paying $500,000 to admission to an admissions consultant to get her kids into USC as the rowing team. Right, she's being defended by an attorney named La- uh, Latham, and Latham is. Oh, we don't care about those lawyers. Oh no, we do. This one's good because it's a conflict of interest, guys. Oh. So Latham also represents USC in an unrelated matter. So Latham oh. and Watkins are the attorneys. Oh, the firm. The firm, Latham oh, and Watkins, yes. and they also represent USC in a, an unrelated matter. And USC is contemplating suing Lori Laughlin. And of course, what would Lori Laughlin do? Counter sue against Singer, right? Right. That's right. That would be the smart thing if she gets sued civilly. And, and so we say we, we think that USC might might be thinking it. The way this came up was the LA Times got a hold of a letter that was written 
by um, an attorney that was talking about this representation of Lathan and Watkins on the part of Laughlin and how they represent USC. And in the letter, it says, quote, USC has suggested that Latham's representation of Miss Laughlin and Mr. Giannulli may conflict with USC's interests in possible future litigation with these individuals. And so then the idea is, well, why would that even come up? Why would they even review this for a conflict of interest if they weren't contemplating possible litigation against Laughlin and her husband. And so because this came out, people are now putting, trying to read the tea leaves, putting two and two together, saying, oh, USC must be thinking about this. So the, go ahead. So the prosecutors in the criminal matter have brought it to the court's attention, saying this would be adverse for this firm to represent both the university and the couple at the same time. So a motion was filed by the prosecutors in the criminal matter to disqualify Latham Firm. The Latham firm. What's, here's what's interesting about USC. USC bringing uh, a lawsuit against them for what? What? What, what are they, they going to bring it for? Defa fraud. Defamation, fraud, perhaps. Defamation. Fraud. Defamation. Mm -hmm. um, Isn't it USC's own coaches that were involved in some of this? It, I, it, it I, is. It is. It's a rogue. Okay, coach, let's right? back up. So yeah. USC, I'm, I'm jumping on Laughlin's side. What's my argument going to be? So you're telling me that I, quote, defrauded you, USC. Oh, and by the way, didn't you just have a guy uh, plead guilty and uh, get a sentence for the basketball scandal? Oh, yes, you did. That's right. That was one of your assistant coaches. Oh, and oh, by the way, wasn't your rowing coach involved in this situation to come in here and allow my children to come in? Oh, yeah, that's right. You guys were involved, and these are your, quote, employees. Isn't that true, true USC? Oh, yes, it is. So wait a minute. So you're saying you were scammed, and yet your people were part of other scams? So I mean that's what that's what my argument would be the whole time, Cal. Well, I, I wanted to go back to the to the Latham and Watkins thing because they are a huge law firm. Right. I only know this because a friend of mine used to work for us, still just retired from there, and they have so many offices and so many people that how. So let's say a guy in central L.A. for L&W is working for USC. Lori Laughlin's people live in Riverside, and she's working with a completely guy, different guy in a completely different office. Easy. How it, can that be a conflict? Easy. It's computer. There's computers. You have to do a conflict check. And, and yes, there sometimes is a conflict, and but we have computers, huh? Denise, yeah. The conflict check. But you have to stop and think about it. They're currently representing USC, and now they're – going to represent Laughlin when it involves and impacts USC and the reputation of USC. But I'm saying that's a corporate they, guy, and here, but it's really a guy over here, and then there's another guy over there doing but, representing Laughlin. But it Laughlin. doesn't matter. If it's one firm, the whole firm's disqualified. Understood. I'm just trying to figure out yeah. why. Yeah. Well, it depends, but it can be, Denise. There can be. You can, there's exceptions. Yes. You can do a Chinese depends. wall and that kind of yeah. stuff, but there's a presumption that the law firm has gotten um, – private privileged information yeah. from each of the clients, and that is the conflict. Yeah, well, and, 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 and the other thing is, and I like that, because the, uh, the red herring maybe in what uh, the L.A. Times was thinking here is that a lawsuit would have to be filed by USC against the Laughlins in order for the conflict of interest to arise, and it doesn't. Right. So when you look at the California State Bar rules, first, if Latham and Watkins thought they had a conflict, their first duty would be to – inform USC, we're representing the Laughlins, we right. need your consent in order to do this. And so now USC is looking at it going, all right, it could very well be that they've received something from L&W, and now they've got to respond to it. Are we going to give them uh, informed are, written consent? Are we going to give them the consent or not? The second right. thing is, again, like you are saying, that if the representation of more than one client would affect the interests of the client. It doesn't have to be a lawsuit. Right. And so if the interests would be adversely affected and you don't have a waiver, you got a problem. Well, and that's what the prosecutors are arguing in their motion. Yes, we, we need to watch the result of that. Yeah, and all states are different. Again, we're, not, we're, we're, in, we're throughout the United States. And you, so you look at it, but some states says even if you have a waiver – you can't – there's still too much conflict. Yes. You know? So it, it, there's a lot of questions here, and the prosecutors have brought it up properly. But the thing is, is really, it, does it, it – does it, I don't know. I'm just saying USC, good luck. And really the question is, why does the prosecutor care? They're not involved in it either way, and I'll tell you why. 
you don't want to get, you know, 75% of the way through this. And then the conflict arises after you spend a million bucks prosecuting people or whatever it is. And now you got to go back to square one and do it all over. Yeah, because who's got, Lori Laughlin's going to argue, oh, I got convicted. It's because there's a conflict over here. And, yeah, and ineffective that, assistance of counsel exactly. based on the conflict. It goes up on appeal, and now you're back to square one. That's exactly, exactly. right. Yeah, that's right. Point. Well, that's a great point. So we're going to, again, we, we still follow Lori Laughlin's. Uh, case and uh there's there's so much going on in hollywood we can't even keep we've got duck dynasty and we've got uh pitch perfect which one do you guys well, 855 law radio and you guys want to hear about either of these duck dynasty is a quick easy one but what's interesting is the founders or co-creators of it are are, are there's an, a there's a big dispute over uh it's called itv studios um, they're suing each other over issues long story short i, I can i can cut this one short is they're basically agreeing to sell out and sell their company back to or their ownership. It's about 35% to this ITV studios because they bought out the majority shares of the company, which they were part of. That was the Duck Dynasty producer. So anyway, and, yeah, and the, most of the settlement is is confidential. So we yeah. really can't yeah. tell you the whole settlement, but just kind of give the gist of that one. But generally speaking, the original Duck Dynasty people are uh, co-creators are going to be out. So uh, Pitch Perfect, my wife's and daughter's favorite uh, Is it show. a chick flick? I, no, I love Pitch Perfect. I laugh. Have you ever watched yeah. it before? Todd, have you seen I, it? I, I have never seen it. Oh, it, my gosh. You have to watch it. It's the funniest show. You have to watch that because oh. it's really good. It's good content, but they sing, and the actresses in it are funny. It's, so it's a comedy and a musical all at once, and they they have competitions and all that kind of stuff. You realize I'm famous for the line that I wouldn't mind musicals if there wasn't so much singing and dancing. So... Uh... <laughs> I don't oh. know if I would like it. Oh, go really? on, go I on. I thought you would like that for some reason. <laughs> Your personality is such that you're, you know, kind of gregarious. Uh-oh, and... <laughs> uh-oh. I thought so you would what, like what, it. So what, what happened? What did they do? Well, it's complicated. Um, I had to do a little outline, to be honest, a little flow chart. But um, GC got a $76 million loan. And then it was from CT Bank, and then it was sold. Right, and then it was sold to Sanditao. Oh. I know. I'm telling you, it's, <laughs> long, it's complicated. Long story short, lawsuits. But long story short was that the initial one um, that they they're going to get paid. Fourteen point one million dollars yes. is. Uh, go look it up. You guys want to hear about it? We want to talk about. It. Hey, <laughs> hey, we appreciate you being here. This hour radio law talk is done, but there's always more at radiolawtalk.com. We'll see you when we do this again. So go to radiolawtalk.com and you can listen to all of our podcasts. I'm Fred Penny, your host. We'll talk to you later. Thank you for listening to this hour of Radio Law Talk. have been listening to radiolawtalk.com a copyrighted presentation of radio law talk incorporated